hello and welcome to Steelers Today. It's day seven, is it? Day seven. Day seven of training camp at Heinz Field. See, Terminators on, on the count here. They're all running together. They, they're running together. This this day was kind of a downer after yesterday. What there's pads and everybody and you know doing set drills that looked like football, and then. They come out in shorts today, and I knew it when I saw them walking out and the guys were in shells. And the only thing that kind of caught my eyes, they were, you know, when they come out and do their, their little walkthrough before practice, they were doing some two-minute offense. And I'm like, okay, they're going to give us a little two-minute today. And as it turns out, Rudy can fail. Oh, geez. Uh, because Mason Rudolph got the team down to the uh, three-yard line, ran out of time. The ball didn't hit the ground on Mason Rudolph's. This is at the end of practice. Yeah, they had a yeah. minute and 18 seconds left, one time out started at their own 48 and they had had to score a touchdown uh he got them down the field uh threw a pass short of the end zone minka fitzpatrick came up made the tackle at the three clock rang at, ran out that one's over dwayne haskins did the same thing working with the twos uh there was a blown coverage it was third and three from the uh from the 30 with about 15 seconds left so it was pretty much time to, to make something happen there and the defense blew a coverage. It was cover two, actually. Uh, and Rico Bussey's running all by himself down the sideline. Touchdown. End of practice. What the citizens need to know is that he told this entire story just to drop the clash reference. Absolutely. <laughs> he really did. Because Rudy can <laughs> fail. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, since you brought him up, Dwayne Haskins and the kind of camp that he's had. He is, and understandably, a focal point for a lot of fans. Uh, there's no way that you can be into football enough to, to, to follow the draft that closely, to see Washington take him, to see Washington put him right out there. He comes to Pittsburgh the next year, and you just, you're you not just going to forget about him. You're not going to think he has no potential. And when you watch him, Dale, the stuff that you know Ben Roethlisberger made the joke earlier this summer about how he could throw the ball through the car wash and not have it get wet, the arm is there he's got a first round arm there's no doubt about that and he made a throw today late in practice um to one of the tight ends and he threw the ball so hard the tight end and it was about a 20 yard little post pattern he threw it so hard the tight end it was dax raymond had no choice but to catch it in self-defense <laughs> <laughs> it was going to take his head off uh but it was a great throw you got to pass the defender and boom it was on the you know on the tight end uh, you know, some of the other things we'll see about, you know, I, I think, you know, Mike Tomlin talked about it after practice that, you know, that one of the things that you have when you're a, uh, a backup quarterback, you know, Ben Roethlisberger works with the ones. Yes. That's who he works with. You're working with twos and threes yeah. and fours. And sometimes this phase of camp, uh, sometimes all mixed together. So learning those guys, you know, not knowing, you know, Ben Roethlisberger knows the three or four receivers he's going to work with. Mason Rudolph largely knows he's going to work with some of those, most of those same guys, guys who are going to be on the team. When you're Dwayne Haskins, maybe you're working with a Rico Bussey one day. Maybe you're working with, you know, some Matthew Sexton the next day, and you're learning these guys and how they work. Right. Out. Well, to his credit, though, a couple days ago, uh, we saw Haskins roll out to the right, and you know which play I'm talking about here, and he sees Zach Gentry, who is a two or a three, a three. Okay, in this offense. Right, right. Uh, He's got double coverage on him, following him down the right sideline. And the moment the ball leaves Haskins' hand, you know it's a completion. That's how pretty the play was. That's how definitive and authoritative it was. Uh, it is, between that and his, his ability to move, it, it does give you a little bit of pause when you watch him, in a good way. Yeah, and you know his movement skills are not his strong point. I mean, he's not a, uh, a mobile quarterback, No, but he's strong is what he, I mean. When, strong, he, when yeah. he moves, when he moves, he, when he he's steps a long strider, up, I mean, he's, his legs go yeah, up to here, but when he steps up in the pocket, it's with authority. Do yeah. you know what I'm talking about? When it, the rush is coming this way, we've seen it a couple of times here. He'll step forward. It's not like he's turtling or something. He knows where he's going. I like what he's doing. Um, he's taking care of the ball, but, it, but at the same time being aggressive, um, he's dialed in, even in the reps in which he's not going. Um, he's building a rapport with the group of guys that he's getting an opportunity to work with. And I think that's a component of this that we don't often talk about, too, is, you know, there's a get to know in terms of the cohesion, particularly when you're 
working with multiple groups and multiple people. And that's a guy that's getting some third group reps. That's a guy that's getting some second group reps. And so he's got a lot of people to get to get comfortable with. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, he and Mason Rudolph in the, in the preseason. And Josh Dobbs has done nothing. Um, you know, right. he, he continues to make some plays in this camp as well. So I, I don't know that they're as bad off as a lot of people nationally seem to think at the position at the position yeah i mean mean, if if ben gets hurt i mean it's still you've got three guys with nfl experience they're they're probably the only team in the league i'd have to go look it up maybe i think dallas does but they're not the high pedigree guys that the Steelers have here um that have four quarterbacks with nfl experience on their roster now that's something to consider here because you know not all that long ago the steelers were rolling out duck in los angeles And uh, this is not that. This is definitely not that. When we come back, the defensive secondary is starting to make some waves. Welcome back. Another point of concern, if not excitement, has been the secondary. And in fact, if you look over the defense and you account for the fact that Alex Highsmith is showing as well as he is and kind of starting to settle down the concerns about losing Bud. What you're really left with is a concern at right outside cornerback and slot corner. One or the other being manned by Cam Sutton. So you can say either one. You know what I'm saying? As I, as I wrote about in our Friday Insider, uh, it's going to be Cam Sutton on the outside. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to figure out who that slot's going to be. They finally, the last two days, have worked some dime into the equation. In those situations, you're seeing Cam Sutton go back inside and be the, the dime yes. linebacker. Yes. But you're seeing jo- uh, James Pierre on the outside. And then you're seeing Antoine Brooks and, and Arthur Millette uh, fighting for that nickel spot. And what they're looking for there is a Mike Hilton clone. Uh, you know, they could go with Cam Sutton there. But there's a reason why Cam Sutton couldn't beat Mike Hilton out. Mike Hilton was a playmaker out of that spot. Cam Sutton's the better cover guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's going to be less splash. But there's less of those, you know, the but run-stopping what, plays, the plays in the backfield, those kind of things. They, they want to be able to use the plays that they had in place for Hilton specifically to get at the quarterback, to trigger him in a certain direction. Uh, to disrupt the offensive rhythm. What it does is it gets them some one-on-one matchups up front, too. If somebody in the on the offense has to account for the cornerback blitzing from the slot, then they can't you know, double-team TJ or double-team anybody, you know, Cam Hayward or one of mm-hmm. those guys because they have to slide some coverage out to make sure that the, the nickel corner isn't, isn't coming in as well. So, you know, I, I looked it up. Mike Hilton blitzed 70 times oh, last year. Oh, my goodness. 70. The slot corner position, that's insane. Uh, yesterday, Dale, you and I were were, uh, were talking with, with Antoine Brooks, and I, I brought up with him about being like Mike Hilton. And to be honest with you, I wasn't sure how he'd react to that, because a lot of guys will just say, hey, I got to be me, guy, I got to yeah. be me. Listen to this response. Antoine, you're going to hear Mike Hilton's name an awful lot, I'm sure, uh, in, in, in the days and the weeks to come here. How much do you look at his game or at all, or is it just, I've just got to be me? Oh, no, of course. I look at Mike's game all the time. Uh, one of the best blisters in that, that touched the Steelers uniform. Uh, he taught me a lot while he was here, uh, and I appreciate him being, you know, I call him my OG. So I appreciate him being a, a, a big brother figure to me when, you know, when I was here and trying to get the nickel spot or trying to do, you know, just just really trying to learn, learn the this, defense. Especially the blitzing component that stands out? Of course, of course. Especially that, you know, that's my physicality in the game. Uh, really like the blitz, you know, blitz, cover, you know, Mike did it all. I really just want to, you know, fill in his shoes, you know, maybe, maybe not. M- mostly maybe. <laughs> he knows well, what, they, what you just said. I, I guarantee it's come up more than once in the, yeah. in, the, in the room when they're talking about this. They're watching film of Mike Hilton on a daily basis. Arthur Millette said the same thing. I'm watching what Mike Hilton did because that's their defense. That's yeah. the defense that they want to run. Right. And I, I, I also wonder where, though, in all of this, James Pierre fits because Pierre has shown well here. Okay. And I understand, that, you know, you need more than one guy and you need depth. And maybe Pierre could be a guy who spells, you know, if Hayden gets hurt, Sutton gets hurt or whatever else. You need more than one guy. But at the same time, he's looking very good. Yeah, I, I, again, I, much like the, the national perception of the quarterback room, I don't know that the, the perception or the way they feel about their cornerbacks is quite the way that people outside of, mm-hmm. of the organization feel about their cornerbacks. Like, 
they would have gone out and gotten somebody more than, or, you know, than Arthur Millette if they felt that this was going to be a big issue. Yes. Yeah, they, they would have, have made money. an effort. They have money. Mm -hmm. There are guys out there that they could have went and signed who have played. Which they've done in other positions. Which they've done in other positions. When, when they needed a three-edge rusher, they went they and got Melvin Ingram for crying Teams out loud. always tell you what they think or you know, what their plans are, what their intentions are by the moves or the, that they make or they don't make. Or they make. don't make, yeah. And, and, and this one's telling me, it's screaming to me, that they feel comfortable with their secondary. Now, two words that we haven't brought up in this discussion, and conspicuously so, are Justin Lane. Justin and Lane. Um, what do you think? He, I, I don't dislike You're Justin You're not down Lane. on him? I'm okay. not down on Justin Lane at all. Uh, you know, he made a play in a football today, and again, <laughs> Rico Bussey, Lane comes in, Tips the ball away. Bussy, Bussy kind of looks around, finds it in the air, and catches it for for a catch. It was a good play. Yeah, it's it, not. That's not Lane getting yeah. burned. That's right? not him. He made a yeah. play on the football. So there's something there. Uh, you know, right now Justin Lane though is is you know the more, whatever you want to look at, the better player, the more complete player, the guy who's higher on the depth chart. That doesn't mean that can't change. We saw it last year yeah. when Lane was playing ahead of him. Yes. I think they're both promising young cornerbacks. The key word being young. You know, we saw a whole bunch of first-round cornerbacks come into the league the last couple of years, and every single one of those guys struggled their first couple of years in the league. Right. It it's doesn't, just what happens. It doesn't mean you're already burns right off the bat. And by the way, Artie actually got off to a semi-decent start in his career. Absolutely. And then, and then, and then he couldn't remember the plays. And then he couldn't remember the plays. Um, <laughs> poor Artie. <laughs> no way we could get through an entire segment on the secondary <laughs> Without burying already one last time. Yeah. Just remember, Rudy can't fail. Nice, nice. In this case, he could. Nice. We'll be back Monday with a new episode of Steelers Today.